Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Raising Kane movie thoughts. So I feel like pointing out that Jenny really needs to beware of her urges because every time she gets <laughs> comfortable with ex-boyfriend, I don't even remember his name, a woman seems to die. Actually, I guess the second time, technically a woman doesn't die because she does not... Well, actually, the babysitter died, although she might have anyway. Anyway, so did Jenny die or not? I have no idea. I honestly cannot figure out what exactly happened. See, if it had been that they had brought him down into the moor, you know, the, Carter. If they had brought Carter into the morgue and he had looked in and it had been Jenny, I would have, you know, said, ah, so maybe he only, he was the only one who saw Jenny there and it was actually some other girl. Or maybe there wasn't even someone there or something. But no, Carter was nowhere to be seen when they check out the corpse. It's clearly Jenny. They say she's dead. I have no idea how she comes back. And at first, she sort of looks like a corpse. You know, at first she looks like she just got up from the, the morgue and walked all the way back to the house and hid out while waiting for him, you know. But, yeah. I... To be perfectly honest, I am going to have to spoil Psycho here. And... I'm sorry if you have not seen that movie, I don't know how you've managed to avoid it, and do be aware that you cannot even use the excuse, oh, it's an old movie, I haven't seen all the old movies. It was remade, I'm not sure that was a good idea though, in 1998, so yeah. I love the straight up reference to Psycho with the car sinking, you know, and De Palma takes it one step further, just so it's not a complete, you know, straight reference. I'm not gonna call it a ripoff. She wakes up in the car and it's like, you know, not only is the car not sinking, now she's awake in there, you know, and she struggles and just, you know, and I love her face when we see her in the morgue as well, you know. And basically, the film is psycho on steroids, you know. We've got this basically nice person, you know, seemingly innocent man, who's, you know, doing something nefarious, and this time, he doesn't just have one personality, he's got like four of them, you know. That's, yeah. I like that the father turned out to still be alive. You know, I kind of got the, you know, I thought that maybe he would be once you heard that they never found the body. You know, there is sort of, excuse me, there is still the possibility, you know. And, yeah, he turns out to still be alive. I have no idea what he did to Carter to suppress Kane, though, in one of the first scenes, you know, at the motel. But, okay, and obviously he's the one who's been taking care of the abducted children all along. Actually, early on, when I still thought that the father was dead, you know, I love the reveal on that, by the way, that, you know, you hear him, you hear, what's his face, Kane talking to someone else off screen, and I, I can kind of tell from the voice, and I was thinking, it's let's go. It's definitely him. You know, and then it cuts, and yeah, it's him. And you never see the two. I mean, they could do it. They could do the split screen. They could pull off having both of them in the same shot. But instead, you know, they just have... Yeah, I, I thought that was quite clever. And so anyway, yeah, that he... I, yeah, I have no idea what he did to suppress Kane. You know, he drugged him, but it was a... Yeah, that, that was when I realized this movie smoked the good stuff, some something fierce, you know. I, you've got 
I mean, at that time, I thought it was two, you know, imaginary personalities, you know, two split, two personalities from a split personality person, something like that, that were trying to, you know, one of them was drugging the other, you know, that is just, that's whack. I'm not sure I'm technically allowed to say that. And, yeah, I like the, you know, sort of, I don't know, mixed sort of tone of the ending, because, yes, he's there, but it's Margot, and Margot just wants to take care of the children. Margot just wants to get, you know, the actual, I don't remember his name, the original Dr. Nix, you know, he wants to, Margot wants to get Dr. Nix away from the children, so maybe Margot isn't out to hurt Amy, and maybe it's just kind of watching over, you know, but, yeah. And the, the, you know, just before that, I like how you don't completely hear, you know, it's sort of, if, if you pay close attention, you'll hear that he'll, you know, that he has sort of a whispery, Amy, and, you know, she responds, Daddy, and she just runs off. And at first you don't even really, you know, it's, it's nice and subtle, you know, as the two women are sitting there talking about, you know, is it better to have a forty-five or to have Jack? I don't know. Jack is probably easier to have sex with and safer. Yeah, presuming. Uh, yeah, I love that his wife literally dies as she sees them. You know, it's just sort of well, pff, screw that. You know, okay, enough of that noise. Uh, I'm out of here. You know that. That's just that is an awesome emotional burden to carry, you know, for both of them, that, wow, you know, and the, you know, I, I love how this movie just completely goes off the rails with the dream sequences, like, for a while, you're like, okay, what actually happened, did this happen, did that happen, you know, it's like, yeah, so, you know, we have, I'm not even sure I remember all of the dream sequences, but yeah, she, you know, I mean, for a while I wasn't even sure she had sex with him in the forest, but then he's like, oh, is that why you ran away from me? And like, okay, she, they had sex in the forest, you know. Yeah, because she wakes up from seeing Carter, who's actually Kane, you know, when she's having sex in the, you know, isn't that just the... Uh, such a bother, you know, you're trying to cheat, perfectly good spot to have forest sex at, and your husband shows up to be peeping Tom, you know, that's just no class, that guy. And, you know, she wakes up from that, and then it's like, okay, so did that actually happen? And then, you know, were the presents actually swapped? And then, okay, now they're swapped back. So I guess that's okay. And then she's like, you know, on the phone with her friend and driving and she's, oh, almost hitting the, the, you know, bicyclists. And then she drives in and gets stabbed by that statue, you know, that's just... And then she wakes up and you're like, okay, so did they actually have sex? Did she go to his place and have sex or did something else? And it's just, yeah. That's, yeah, and it's, of course, a great sort of setup. Yeah, it's, it sets up that later, you know, with, with the truck, you know, and, and the, that the first line about the truck is, yeah, you could have gotten those people killed, you know, and you have the, you know, and he talks about, ah, oh, it's sticking out way too much. Well, we got to drive, and he's, the truck is just driving back and forth. And then Jack's there in the car, and he's going to get out. Because, and, and then he sees the pistol, because the pistol is only covered when, you know, it's, it's because of the angle. So he can see that the pistol is, you know, being pointed at Jenny. And he's, you know, going closer, and we're just like, oh, he's going to get stabbed. And, you know, you've got Greg Henry, <laughs> fresh from payback, I guess. Well, actually, this is before payback. And, you know, he's like, you know, looking down at Jack. And I was, I literally yelled at the screen, no, don't look down, look up. 
you know, and he looks up and oh, the baby goes, you know, falls down. You know, excellent use of slow mo. And Jack ca catches it, and then the gun goes off and shoots off the tip, and then he doesn't get yeah. You know, that could actually be an interesting form of circumcision. I better put a pat on that. I'm sure somebody else has thought of it. And yeah, just that whole sequence. And you, you just gotta love how Morgan is, you know, and he doesn't believe Jenny. You know, he's like, yeah, yeah, of course my son is standing there. No, my son's a good little boy. He's doing what, it, you know. And I guess, you know, by the Hollywood logic of, you know, this whole sort of how they think split personality disorder works, multiple personality disorder, that of course there'd be a personality out to, you know, be careful, out to actually take care of the children. And that's why he knocks out, she knocks out, you know, Dr. Walt Waldenheimer, something like that, you know. And it's brilliant that, you know, we, we got set up earlier that she wears a wig. And so, you know, she's grabbing the wig, grabbing the coat, walking on out of there. And Morgan, yeah, so, you know, Morgan is hiding out in there. And Morgan is not actually going to help, you know, the, the, the father. Morgan is actually there to kill Dr. Nix, you know. And Morgan is doing a crap job, and I come to think of it, of protecting the children because she almost gets Amy killed. Anyway, I get always keep backup, you know, f further down in case a baby might go flying through the air. You never know when that might happen. And you know, she just stabs him, and it's just that's brilliant. A after. You know, stealing the baby carriage. You know, gotta love that. That actually, you know, because Dr. Nix turns his back on. The people in this movie have got to learn to take better care of the children around them. You know, several of them temporarily or permanently lose children on their watch, you know, and just, you know, I guess a couple of them do have the defense that they're dead, but still, is yeah. I I quite like how the very opening. I mean, I didn't know anything about this movie going in. I just, you know, f from the cover, I gathered that you know he was going to be, you know, kind of a psychopath, and I figured that it was going to be over the movie he loses control more and more. I had no idea that he was a split personality disorder nut case from the first frame. You know, that is just fantastic that he can I have no idea how the sneeze plan worked or if that actually like tested well. If he like checked with his father, what if I sneeze on her face? And the father was like, perfect. That Norwegian accent was distracting to say the least. Anyway, you know, so he sneezes a bunch of times and it gets something in her eye. I can't get over the sneeze plan. I'm sorry. That's that's like the least. What's the success rate on that? Seriously, I. Yeah, I. That that's just. Okay. Anyway, he sneezes a speck of dust into her eye, and you know, promising to help get it away, he chloroforms her and suddenly, you know, the other guy, you know, and it's only when you see him grab the chloroform that you realize this is actually, you know, he's already doing bad stuff, you know, and then suddenly there's two John Lithgow's in the scene, and you're like, what's going on? And, you know, I mean, I figured out pretty quickly, excuse me, that it was a split personality, and, you know, then he talks about, like, twins. Actually, for a while, I thought that there were twins, but one of them got killed, maybe by Carter, actually, and he made up an additional twin to, you know, yeah, to, to get, yeah, to, to get by, you know, to not feel so bad about it. I'm also not entirely clear on when Josh was, you know, suddenly Waldenheimer is just saying, oh, there's Josh, there's Margot, and the audience is like, 
Josh and Margo? Who the crap are Josh and Margo? What are you talking about? And yeah, a few minutes later we meet we meet Josh again and we meet Margo for the first time in the movie. You know, Josh, I did kind of figure that there was something with that kid who yelled at Kane. You know, that, that did seem... There, there was something there, you know. I like how he tries to frame Jack, although it is slightly, I don't know, it, it doesn't work, and I guess that's because she's still alive. That is still the biggest question of the entire movie to me. How, did she ever die? Did she not die? Did, what, yeah, anyway. Foreboding, that was the word I wanted to use about the spearhead, you know, jabbing her in an early scene, and then it turns out to be a dream, and then you see another spearhead, and yeah. Now, one thing I do s somewhat wonder about, and maybe it got lost in all the dialogue in between the tons of reveals in this film, but I wasn't entirely clear on what exactly adult Dr. Nix was even intending to do. I mean, his, you know, his experiment was already a success. He, he messed up his own son and studied his own son. It proved to, you know, yeah, it, it proved to work. And he wrote a book about it. He was massively popular. I love the bit about, you know, they, they made a TV movie out of the book. That's brilliant. That's, that's a cute little nod. But, yeah, is he trying to recreate the experiment? I, I sort of got it better when there was no living do adult Dr. Nix. You know, when it was literally, you know, Carter and his messed up personalities that, you know, maybe they were trying to recreate it. Maybe they were, you know, because that's all he remembered of his father, but that his father actually wants to do it again. I don't quite understand why. Yeah, I, I don't know. Does, does he have a slightly different experiment in mind? Oh wait, the control group. He never met... That's it. He's trying to recreate the control group. Never mind. I, I think that's it, because he got caught last time he was stealing babies. You know, buying babies, actually. I suppose that's more or less what there is. I really liked the, you know, when when Jenny came back, I have no idea how she did, but the, you know, first you just see, you know, you see the empty bed, you know, and you're just like, oh, no, he took, you know, he took Amy too, and then, you know, he's going around in, in the house, and then suddenly he looks back at the camera, he looks back at the monitor, and there's just, there's her, you know, and she still looks like she, you know, just died in the car, you know, and... Yeah, you know, he goes in there to find her, and, you know, he's trying to look around, you know, see the, the owner of the shoes, and he's just about to turn on the light, and then she cuts his wrist, and I, I did not see that coming, you know, I, I don't know if I thought that she was in the shoes, I actually, I think I thought that it was just gonna turn out that, you know, she was dead. I was really surprised when she was just sitting there breathing normally, you know, and then Jack is, you. well, I guess once she's alive, she could, you know, verify Jack's story, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah, I, I really, I had no idea that his plan was going to go wrong in that kind of way. I really thought that the frame job and the killing the wife business would work out as he had planned, you know, I mean, it didn't require any sneezing, so what could go wrong? That actually, that makes it even worse. The sneeze plan was more effective than the well-thought-out frame job, actually surprisingly well-thought-out, considering he, you know, actually improvised that whole thing, you know. <laughs> Should get him on whose line, he'd make a killing, literally. <sighs> I know, it's not called Who's Line anymore, I don't remember the new title. Yeah, I suppose that pretty much does cover it. But yeah, I, I quite like that he actually does get away there at the end. You know, you just see the, you know, trench coat, well, coat, yeah, whatever. 
coat wearing, wig wearing Morgan, you know, just walk away from there without anyone seeing, you know, because the only person there who really, you know, might, like, yeah, Jenny knows about it and would be paying attention to it, but she's kind of paying attention to Amy, obviously, and the cops as well, and they just heard a shot be fired, so they're probably, actually, they should still be, you know, making sure no one leaves the area, but yeah, they're not very good cops. People in this movie are always losing other people, you know, I mean, mostly it's children, but still, sometimes it's, I really do like that first scene just brimming with tension with how, you know, the, I think, joggers are just, you know, passing, and she's laying there, you know, clearly not conscious, and the the kid wakes up, you know, and, you know, the other guys are just, oh, just kiss her, you know, make sure that that's how, you know, and, yeah, they, the joggers just buy it. Again, I'm not sure I buy that they buy it, but, sure, why not, you know, I, I don't know, I think I'd still personally go in and ask a question, you know, the, the horn just went off, and, yeah, you, you know, your car, you know, just stopped here. Is, is everything okay? Just, just to make sure, you know, I, I'd actually personally risk being, you know, a bit of a bother to an amorous couple. I, I just, I don't think I'd really want to, yeah, anyway, yeah, I do believe that's everything, so hope you enjoyed it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.